Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48's World and I am none other than Deb Chanel, the CEO, the owner, the contributor, the correspondent over here asking the family to come on in and relax and sit down and let's talk about Watch What Happened Live that uh, aired today or it aired on Sunday the 19th at, um, I think it was, let me see, nine o'clock lasted 30 minutes then they do that after show thing but i didn't catch that but i was over there with andy watching his uh show for season 17 episode 11 where he had portia williams and tanya sands or sams over there on their show tripping out getting into the know and people calling in trying to express you know different uh viewpoints and asking them curt, uh questions and things of that nature and i was there for it and let's get on to where portia was asked a question about what she felt dennis was doing out there currently in the social media news now uh regarding uh being uh, what do you call it meeting four women or having dinner a late evening dinner in the wee hours of the morning of Saturday, one particular um, day uh, or night, I should say, with four beautiful women at some local uh, dinery here in Atlanta, Georgia. And she was like, the question really caught her off guard. And she was like, I'm dealing with it. <laughs> like, girl, she said, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, it's, you know, it's my life. And I'm pretty much, I'm working on it. That's what she pretty much wanted to say, had to say, and she sped it out as that. She's working on it. So that really wasn't a true answer that I'm sure the caller was satisfied with, but it was an answer. Okay. Then we had an, um, Kenya Moore calls in to the show, and she's pretty much saying Tanya is a liar, and, you know, this, that, and the third. Uh, she, I don't know if she was just trying to counteract the fact that Tanya was saying that was her wig and it wasn't her wig, which you pretty much couldn't get out of that. You know, it was a phone call uh, instructed to get her wig back to the States because she left it there and she needed it, wanted it, and she had also left her phone charge. So um, Tanya pretty much on the episode that we just watched tonight as well, um, was saying, or she was pretty much trying to get back at Kenya because Kenya had those through salt at her time. Her fiance was cheating on her with some beautiful uh woman that was, uh, I guess, will have run circles around Tanya. So Tanya was kind of pretty much sneaking back and jabbing her like she was jabbing her. So, um, I think that was quite cute. Ken, I mean, not Candy, um, Tanya was keeping it soft but cute, but getting it to the point. So, um, I like it. Nice play. That was uh, um, Tane's way of getting back or getting with Kenya, letting her know, I didn't appreciate what you did there. So, I am going to uh, make you look bad on TV, too, and put some uh, dirt on your name that you trying to recognize and want people to recognize that um, you can wear your own natural hair. If you use your products from the Kenya Morris line, your hair will grow as well as hers, if not longer, and this, that, and third. And that was your claim to fame. Not trying to sit here and pretty much uh, wear wigs or extensions or anything of that nature. But just basically trying to, um, you know, be natural, be do less to your hair. And use her products and, you know, your hair would flourish, it would grow, it would be thick, it would have so much volume to it and it would be long. And it looked look very moisturized. So, that was her claim to fame. So, she was letting the world know, Kenya been gooping y'all. She been using extensions, wigs, um, what do you call it? layer ons or whatever and she's not just using her real products for her hair or just using her real hair at the time she was trying to tell us that hey can you be faking the phone all right home girl has her own little uh stash of wigs extensions and this that, and the third so while she's trying to group all of us thinking she don't ever wear any type of extensions in her hair she don't need to she just lied to you so she was just trying to 
bring Kenya's character down that don't always believe what Kenya's telling you. And Kenya pretty much know, have known that as well as Portia. They alluded to it, especially Portia, when she was saying when she had gripped her hair when they had that fight back then and there, she already knew she had extensions in because she could feel them. But, of course, you know, Kenya's going to play her role and make like she don't know what she's talking about. She lying, this, that, and third. You know, everybody lying. Kenya ain't going to never lie, okay? Um, then we leave that situation. Another caller said, um, how did you really feel about Nene's apology that she gave her on, uh, I guess the upcoming season that they were, you know, friends again or trying to get back to that point. They had no animosity towards each other and they hugged it out. Some tears were shared and the caller was asking her that she really think Nene was, um, sincere and she was like, Mm, basically she has to take it as she was sincere she thinks she was she feel in her heart that she was and that's all she really needed to know because you know people must know that you can't hold down a ruse or a false presentation of yourself for so long the true you gonna come out so she's taking it as face value that Nene really does uh, feel sorry for what she did and she's going to give her a second chance. And this is what Kenya really don't want. Because she know Nene ain't going to never give her no second chance. Honey, hell will freeze over. She would go to hell, visit it, summer there, and then come back and still say she ain't going to be, you know, uh, have no ties with uh, Kenya on no friendly type of uh, environment or, you know, just getting with her, interacting with her. That would never happen. Okay, so um, basically... Kenya don't want everybody to get in friends or having a camaraderie or just a nice, pleasant conversation when she's around. She, Kenya want everybody to denounce Nene and kick her pretty much off the show. But I'm like, honey, then you got to go, Kenya. You got to go, too. Because like I said, y'all all cut from the same cloth. None of you are true friends because if you were, you wouldn't be on the show. Okay? Just pretty much because you're going to have to dog each other in some fashion or way. To be left on this show. I don't care who you get into it with. You're going to have to get into it with somebody. And they're going to bring out some things that you may know about them personal. And depending on how they've been going at you. You may divulge some of that personal stuff. Even though Candy had made a confession over there. I don't know if she did it here on her Speak On It platform. That, you know, she's for you. Uh, she going to have conversations off camera with you. But if you keep coming, doing the same thing, she might have to bring it on camera. But like I said, she's supposed to be real type friends with Kenya and Cynthia. And those are her ace boom coons right now. And she's going to ride for them. And, you know, I was kind of surprised that Candy would have said something about she don't know Tanya like that. She's getting to know her. But she don't really know her. But she knows Kenya and Cynthia. I'm like, you may know Cynthia. I, you know, Cynthia... Doesn't stand on her own. She doesn't have her own backbone. But she doesn't have a malicious bone in her body. Even though she's trying to uh, portray this rough exterior. This, you know, cussified woman that will get you straight up. And, and put you on the straight and narrow before it's over with. And she's going to be belligerent about it. Cynthia's trying to play that role. But she's just not it. I'm sorry. I don't get it. I don't find it in her nature to be doing it. I mean, if you piss her off about a child or somebody in her family. Yeah, she may go to war with you. But that's natural. That's something everybody would pop off and, and try to defend their family member, their loved ones. That's natural. But just coming at these girls, you know, when it's time to hit an episode... It's just not genuine. It's just not her spirit. I ain't saying she can not grow into it. But from the season she's been here at on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And the last three, 9, 10, and 11. And this one, 12. She just don't have it in her. We can make it. We can give her a storyline to play out. But she just don't feel it. She don't fit the bill. So, Cynthia can cool it in my book on that type of uh, stance. That she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these ladies and read them and, and then act like she don't even know them. You know what I'm saying? It's just not her. But anyway, um, we go where I think a commenter asked Tanya. Well, Tanya said Ken is just jealous of her personality. You know, because she did hear or people may have told her that Kenya was emulating her, imitating her. You know, and you would, watching the playbacks, in hindsight, you would think, well, yeah, Kenya must have some type of um, animosity towards her or some type of dislike 
or she don't feel like Tang is loyal to her in some way. So she needs the 86 or she needs to get her on out the way. So she's going to play with her and see um, how she can get a feel on what really gets underneath her skin and she's going to play it. You know, just like she plays Nene, she likes to feel that she's gotten the best of you and that you just fall apart and, you know, just come unglued like she says Nene does when Nene even sees her coming close to being in the circle. Or when she makes her appearance, Nene just can't handle it. I'm like, huh, that's psychological warfare you're using. Psych, uh, psychology 101. Get them on the defense. That's your whole stance you've been playing since you've been here. And it's quite boring at this time i'm like they're telling tanya to come up with something new can tell my honey you got to come out and be a savage because can you be thought like can don't be doing that but running her mouth just basically trying to see if she can get under the skin to make you react to whatever she's saying but if you don't pay her no mind and you smile hell if you just say hello how you doing and keep it moving that's throwing Kenya off her game because she don't know how to attack you. Because everything she's been throwing at you, you just been taking it. You ain't been, your demeanor hadn't changed. Your voice hadn't heightened to the highest octal level. You hadn't looked like you, you know, wanted to just get out your sleep seat and slap the shit out of her. You know what I'm saying. You know, And, you know, it's just, mm, it, when you play Kenya like that, she don't know how. Because she's on the defense all the time. So she's want to run the show with that defensive passive aggressive type attitude but if you don't give it to her you don't give her the energy that she's trying to pull from you she is like a, a dead grenade okay that is look like it would go off but it's a dummy one you know it's not going anywhere um but yeah that's what she's trying to call herself gonna be doing on uh miss tanya behind it if Minini, Minini come on in now, she can help out. They can take Kenya down in one swift kick. <laughs> okay. Tanya just get her from the top. Nini just get her from the bottom. And then, oh, she's like a tree that been chopped. Timber. Boom. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. So, it just is what it is. I just thought I'd get that theatrics out on y'all. Um, then we got Tanya says she was surprised at Candy. And, um... Not telling her what she knew from what uh, the ladies had told to her in her circle. Meaning, um, what do you call it? Um, the news about this can, this cookie later expressing what she had heard. And since Cynthia was in privy of that, Cynthia did the right thing. Handled it off camera, but they brought the news back on camera. But Candy and her shadiness, her uh, shameful self. You know, she always wanted like she's loyal. And she wants loyal people around her, but she don't necessarily follow her own plan, her own rules in engaging. Um, she always running back, even when Nene tell her stuff. Nene uses her as a pawn, too. Like, you know, I'm just having lunch with you so you can get back to your comrades. Since you're going to be the bone collector for this season, like you were last season. Get it good and, and get it correct. What I tell you, get it back to them. And, of course, can't. Candy was a good soldier. She heard what she had to hear. Went and met up with Cynthia and um, Kenya one day at a little uh, hardware store and dropped the tea on them. And of course, they went on and they and Kenya even got small with Candy at that time and said, Candy, why you didn't get them straight? Why you didn't tell them this and that? She was like, I, I ain't want to hear what they had to say. You know, getting all on Candy. Like, damn, Candy just the messenger. Don't hit the messenger. Just make sure you got all the information so you know how to go forward with your plan of action. But, you know, like I said, they treated, treated Candy like a little piece of trash, too. Until Candy got the tone nation that Candy was trying to throw her away. And then she was like, oh, wait a minute. Let back up off me, honey. Don't give me that attitude. I'm like, no, nah, you needed it. She was lot loaded and ready to spray your behind Candy. Because she's just that type of person. She don't care. She's uh one of those kind where it's like self-preservation. She's going to take her herself and really indulge. Before she thinks about helping somebody else up that ladder. That's just how Kenya is. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to learn. You're going to learn, Candy. You and Cynthia both. Y'all put up with her attitude. Y'all support. Y'all enable her to continue acting like a wild, raging animal out there. Ready to be popped off on or pop somebody. You know? Then you, you're encouraging her. So you got to take some of the flack, too. So, um... 
Tanya was like, you know, I was nice to Candy. I hung around Candy. You know, I thought me and Candy was building something here. But it seemed like I had to watch her, too. I got to watch her from this side. I got to watch her from that side. I got to watch her up yonder. I got to look down, you know, see where she coming from. Then I got to watch in the back of me because I don't understand about this candy now. I thought she was cool, but I got to put my eyes on her now. Only person I'm messing with, only person I'm going hard for is Portia. And you see Andy had them on the show tonight, and they were just really reacting off each other. They were cool. And Portia said in so many terms, this is her Beth BFF, honey. And we already seen them on Instagram together. So I'm like, yes, honey, let that be your sister. She was traveling with her in Jamaica. They were having a good old time. So I'm like, yes, honey, because Portia don't care too much for Candy either. They seem like they don't got something resolved between the two. But they ain't got nothing resolved. They just acting cute for the cameras, okay? Because um, Candy still got her little candy coated click over there. And she know they tight like right, okay? And she ain't got nothing to do with them. They they stay on their side. She'll stay on their side. And when they have to come in the middle, they playing fair with each other. And then they just, you know. But Tanya, that's her girl, honey. That's Portia girl. She gonna go hard for her. And Portia was taken up for, um... Tanya, when Kenya was trying to imitate her when they was over there in Toronto, Canada, yes, honey. And Tanya gonna be really, um, really, um, mesmerized on how Portia has definitely come and, and taken up, uh, for her behind her back. So that's what you need, honey. When you got a good soldier of a friend, they're gonna take care of you. And they're going to make sure nobody talk about you not in their presence. They're going to hold you down. And when you see that, that type of loyalty, that type of nice camaraderie, you're going to do what you can to support them as well. So, yes, I can see the uh, friendship developing between um, Portia and Tanya. I love it. I love it. And then they mean get along, too. That's icing on the cake. Okay, bravo, bravo. And then Tanya can teach Portia where she's kind of lacking. She can bring her up. <clears throat> Portia gonna be a woman to be uh, reckoned with. Then it's better recognized. They leave all these allegedly animals alone and all these other side chicks and women. You got Portia. He got you know she she loving on him. Don't make her turn sour, honey. Don't don't have a woman, uh, a woman that's scorned. Child, please, you don't want to mess with them. You don't want that end result. So Dennis, you better straighten up and fly right, honey. Then we got um somebody call her called into the show and they was asking Andy to ask Portia how she really feel about Yovana after everything had transpired or whatnot. And she told that caller, who? <laughs> she said, I don't even think about her. I don't care about her. You know, I wish her well, but no, I have no ill feelings or any feelings toward her at all. And I'm like, okay, go ahead, Portia. Once was, now is no more. And it's just we disregard anything else. I understand. That's a true G mentality. Um, then we got Portia says she hasn't. Somebody asked her, has she been in contact with, um, what do you call it, uh, Portia? Uh, not Portia. But she, uh, a caller had um, called in to Andy or wrote in to Andy to ask Portia, has she been in contact with Phaedra? And she said um, she... I think they had text on their social media platforms or whatnot, but that's where they kept it, or that's where Portia kept it. As far as having a conversation where they went out or, or talked over the telephone or went out and had lunch or dinner or whatnot, no, they haven't. But she invites it. Um, she don't have any, uh, I guess, bad feelings about if she wants to have lunch or dinner with her. She probably more than likely will go, but, you know, she didn't... Uh, uh, relate any more information on that or how she felt about Phaedra after everything had transpired the years that have passed by from the incident that got them not talking in the first place. So, you know, time heals wounds and, you know, if you see a person trying to um, somewhat be still interested in having their interaction with you from here to there, uh, I mean, that's up to that person that got dealt the bad hand because uh, you can definitely forgive somebody. And, and move on with your life and never want to grace their life again. I mean, you don't have no ill will, but you just don't want to be in their environment no more. You got scorn, you got hurt, you acknowledge it, you forgave, but you don't want to be in that situation with that person. You don't want to be nowhere around with them. And I get that. And it's okay. It's okay to feel that way because you don't hate them, but you just don't want to be around them. So it's too many people in the world that you can be placing yourself around that never did you dirty, never 
threw salt on your name or anything that you just feel more comfortable with. So I, I get it, got it good. We're gonna move on. Then um Portia was um somebody asked her about how she felt about Kenya being exposed to wearing wigs, weaves, and extensions or whatnot. And you know, Portia was like, Okay, you know, I'm not gonna talk bad about Kenya, even though she was saying she think Kenya was buying some of her naked go hair. Um, in her confessionals when they aired Real Housewives of Atlanta tonight. I thought that was cute, child. I'm like, yeah, shot your own business, I girl. Get that um shameless plug in about your hair. Okay. But um she was like, she don't really care. You know, because like I said, when they had that little altercation back on season, whatever it was, uh, she had Kenya hemmed up on that floor and wouldn't let her go. Was holding on to her for dear life. You know, wanted to shake her each and every way but loose. Um, <laughs> she knew then. And she even made a wise crack. But that ain't all your hair, honey. I know what you wear. I know it. You know what I'm saying? So don't fool me. And then Kenya was saying her little banter back to her. And it was cute. But no, Portia was speaking truth. She was speaking facts. She know, uh... She don't wear it all the time. Everybody have seen Can You See How She Don't Put It On Social Media, her social media platform, where, you know, she's shaking her hair, this, that, that. Her hair is very long, and it is almost down her butt. But it is thin, you know, especially up in this crown area. The rest of the back is fine. You know, that's cool. She lifted up. She parted through everything. We know that's your hair, baby. But what we were saying, the fullness that you get that wigs provide or extensions provide is not like your true hair and when you do a lot to your hair that is uh, using a protective styling or accessory that can go on your hair where things won't be so abrasive on your real hair so did nobody not say that wasn't your hair? Now, when you get it all down your back, you know, like it's cascading and so thick. Now, can you come on, baby? Come on. Everybody know that. They just didn't want to put you on blast. We know you were wearing extensions. We know you were wearing wigs sometimes. Because hell, sometimes this shit didn't look like it was sitting on your head right. Like you needed to adjust it a little bit to the left, to the right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you always had the attitude. You always was presenting yourself to you don't wear those things you don't need to wear those things all thing you need to do is buy this little product here and you will have the most shiniest voluptuous curling long lasting hair going on your back you know you were selling your product and that was good uh great very good marketing too but however as you get older your body does not make those nutrients to develop your hair follicles and for the stuff to seek out and make that good strong lasting hair we all go to a situation where we get our hair gets a little thinner uh we gray more so we keep dying it we keep messing up our scalps and this that third so we do lose hair as we age but kids try to you know be like mm -mm, it's all my hair it's all my hair. No. No, she went over there in Marlo Hamptons of being her wig show. Saying, you don't need to wear no wigs. You don't need to wear no extensions. Just get some of my hair product and watch your hair just grow, 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 grow. So, what Tanya did was threw her off the perception. And anybody that was thinking in that mentality that Kenya is right. It, it put a different perspective on that. To say, you know, this woman is talking this, that, and the third. But then... Some days she partake of what she's telling you not to partake of. So it was like a hypocrisy thing going on. And Tanya said, okay, I'm going to tell you, King Moore is wearing fake hair. <laughs> she wearing pieces here and there. So don't let her fool y'all. Don't let her get y'all thinking she is all natural all day, every day. No, she is not. So everybody was saying that wasn't a good shade. That wasn't coming with no house candy use it a savage yeah that was a savage move because she was pretty much directly saying what she giving y'all is false advertisement okay and she is partaking of these different accessories to enhance her looks and her hair as well especially the volume and the fullness so i was there i'm like that's an educated slate <laughs> And it's talking all this bullshit, like trying to get all hood. We're coming with some, like something detrimental. Uh, and she don't know. Tanya's is slaying on an education, uh, educated level type of slay, type of get somebody together. So can't know nothing about that. She don't know nothing about that. <laughs>
But that was a hell of a shade. I can appreciate it, Tanya. I can appreciate it, honey. Tear down where she getting where her money is coming at. It's like somebody saying you need to exercise, you need to buy, buy all their tapes, eat their uh, nutritious foods, and just that and that, and the third, and you can only get it through them. You know, kind of like a Weight Watchers program, whatnot, <sighs> with the added benefits of some cardio exercises that they'll help you do or whatnot for a fee. And then you sit up there and seeing them going and have some liposuction, a liposuction surgery, or anything to shape and body scope their body they ain't down now in the trenches doing all these different exercises and eating all this you know what do you call it uh seagrass or whatever making themselves sick and mentally disturbed because they can't get their hands on something fried something good that everybody else or the rest of the population is partaking of now they trying to go because they like your end results and they want to be and have a body uh fit and mentally fit as well and then you going out here going to the surgeons getting yourself all sculpture and you know selling a dream that you know is hard to keep because you're doing what you're doing you ain't doing what you're telling us to do so yes honey that was a nice slay i don't care what nobody said that was a nice slay can you put down on uh miss uh kenya moore and then somebody asked kenya i mean on uh, tanya uh she don't care about does she care about kenya at all or whatever and she's like not really, not really. She already seen what Kenya's coming for, what she's about, and she's just ready for her, pretty much. She's going to always be on the forefront of looking out for Kenya to shade her, to uh, come at her unnecessarily. She's going to be ready for us. I was like, that's right, be a soldier, girl, be a soldier. I always be ready to go if you ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> just the point that you going to be ready. When somebody say, Tanya, Sam, let's go. You're going to like, okay, I got my suitcase. Where we going, boss? <laughs> That's right. Be ready if you don't even get to go that particular time. Then we got Kenya. Uh, Tanya said Kenya was very, was, you know, lying about her guy. And this girl trying to pick him up. Evidently, she talked with him about what was transpiring, what had went on. And he told his side. And she was uh, okay with it. And she believed it. Maybe in her head, but not in her heart. I can't really say because I didn't really get down to care to even look in past episodes way back when. When she was supposed to be dating this man. Because I tell you, if you've been dating him for 12 years and he had just recently put a rock on your finger. And he still ain't set no date, ain't trying to set no date, girl, please. You know, that's just one-on-one relationship goals, okay? So once they put a ring on your finger, y'all need to be putting a date down somewhere, okay, in the near future. Whether it's six months off or a year off. But it's going to take place within those two time frames. If it don't, like, let's load, let's go into the courthouse and do it now. I don't wait 12 years already. I don't want to wait no more. So, but it just is what it is when it comes to that situation. But she did not believe that her man was cheating on her. She did not believe what Kenya was saying. She thinks Kenya's a hater. She's jealous of her. Don't know why. Because both of them are beautiful women. Both of them are very successful. But some, I get the feeling that Kenya's jealous and she's um, disturbed about Tanya too. I don't know because Tanya getting mm. more, she's getting, he's, she's getting more time on the books just like marlo hampton is it's a shame we didn't see nene this time i guess they trying to show her that this show will rock and roll without her because you know nene's been making some bad moves lately and she's been uh offending people uh that are so-called her um fans that follow her and when she's out in these atlanta streets not actingly accordingly or properly towards the people that definitely tune in to watch her or buy her products or whatnot or come even patronize her um stores that she actually holds um having um out there for us to partake in her boutiques you know people come in they may not have social media platforms but they may do or i think they have social media accounts where they can go on and say i had a nice experience at swag's boutique uh, I didn't get a chance to see Nene, but her clothes were fabulous and this, that, and that. I bought this, that, and that. I will be back. You know, just giving her a nice advertisement. Word of mouth goes quicker than any type of advertisement. Because people want to look at regular people. And they they be depending on these people to be telling the truth about what they're, you know, saying. Or they're giving, uh, um, what do you call it, a review on, in a sense, when it comes to clothing or any type of sports gear. 
you know, they want true actual people getting into the grind, purchasing and then really telling a true story. So, you know, when you out there and you own businesses and it's geared to consumers, especially in the apparel world, you don't want to accept nobody. You want them to come visit your stores and continue to keep coming back. And you want them to like you so you can negotiate better contracts as long as Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know, are basically on air. You want to have these things in the back of your pocket or in your purse so you can use them as negotiating tools. But when Nene is acting up, don't want to film with nobody uh, on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And then when she feel like she want to film with them, the cast members don't want to film with them. So what you think they're going to do? They're going to start looking at the one person, the one common denominator that is upholding or putting a hold on certain things. Why do they feel like they own the show? So then they start looking at you kind of questionable. And then when you get people on social media talking about you, about how you act not in them streets, you know, they take that verbatim. You know what I'm saying? They're like, well, damn, she doing all this, you know, um, having all this animosity with people that called liking her at one point. Now they just, you know, disenchanted with her. I don't know. We might need to check, you know, check this situation out. So, does it look like Nene is being demoted to me? Yeah, it really does. Are they trying to push her out? Yeah, but she's giving them full ammunition to do it because of her demeanor and her behavior. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe Nene is tired and maybe she has something else in the uh, pipeline that's coming to fruition in another couple of years. Who knows? Um, but it is what it is. But that's pretty much it um, I got from Watch What Happens Live that aired tonight. Um the 19th uh that andy had um portia and tanya sam's out there to review you know review them about the the show that just had aired that night and just to talk about life in general and to ask, answer questions that the fans had wrote in for them to be asked of them to answer for them so they'll know a little bit about whatever they asked them you know what i'm saying but that's all I had again. That was season 17, episode 11 on Watch What Happens Live. And um, his co hosts were Tanya Sands and Portia Williams. So that's all I had, guys. So y'all make sure y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about, about it. If y'all watched the show uh, in its entirety, like I said, this was just the first 30 minutes. But sometimes he go and do an after show for 30 minutes and they talk a little bit more. But I usually don't cover that because, hell, I usually be in the bed by now, which I need to be. But it just is what it is. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And share and like my videos. That would help me tremendously. Y'all just don't know. Okay. But now you know. Thanks fam for co-hosting with me. And I will see you next video. Bye bye.